you've done, Nathan, is thank God you're everything to us. You're everything. God, your peace in the midst of a storm. You're a provider when lack is present. You're a healer when sickness is present.
Well, happy Resurrection Sunday morning, everybody. How many of you glad to be in the land of the living? You should go ahead and thank God that you are alive and in your right mind. How many of you are excited about Jesus on this morning and all he's done for you? There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood. Lose all their guilty stains, Mother Green. There, there is a fountain filled with blood. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. A fountain. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from the man who is with and sinners plunge beneath the blood lose all their Lose all their guilt. Lose all their guilt. Lose all their guilt. And sin has not revealed the blood. He says, anyone who eats the bread from heaven will never die. Lean on your neighbor and tell them, I'll never die. I'll change worlds, but I won't die. says, I am the living bread, that bread that came down from heaven. 
Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Did you all hear me? Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. How many of you are excited about living forever? When Lazarus died, Jesus says, Lazarus sleepeth. He never said he was dead. He said he only sleep. And I'm going to wake him up. Because believers don't die. They sleep. He said, and this bread which I will offer so the world may, this bread which I will offer so the world may live is my flesh. Verse 53, he said, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink of his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise that person up at the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me. And I remain in them. That's the power of communion. He said, if you participate in communion, you will remain in me. And I will remain in you. People who participate in communion don't backslide easy. Ain't much could separate them from the love of God. You know why? Because every time they do it, they are reminded about what Jesus has done for them. It deepens their faith. And it strengthens their commitment to him, their gratitude for him. That's why he says, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. It's hard to backslide when you participate in communion and remember the price Jesus paid for you. He says, I live because of the living Father who sent me in the same way anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did. They will live forever. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we gather for the love feast. That's why before you participate in it, make sure your heart is right. Make sure you aren't taking this and hateful and bitter and mean and, and malice and guile. And this ain't no religious affair. Bible says many die and many are weak because they don't discern that this is no light thing. This is the Lord's body. So we sing, search me, O God. I know my heart. Because sometimes I think I know my heart, but God knows something else about my heart. And he sees things in my heart that I don't realize them. I thought I'd just avoid you because, you know, and you know sometimes you think other people is the problem when you really are. <laughs> She's like, I got one amen in, in the church. Look at your neighbor and say, don't get holier than down now. Because the Bible says, let a man examine himself, lest when you think you stand, you fall. Sometimes you think you're right and you're so wrong. You're all going to be surprised who in heaven. I keep telling you all that. Because who you're on here judging and saying they're righteous and they're saved, they're going to beat you right through them gate. You can wonder why they're going down and they're going down the escalator, they're going up the escalator. 
Because let me tell you something, Christianity is more a hard thing than anything else. It's, it's, what is it? A love feast. Say a love feast. love feast. Called by many names, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, Holy Communion, Holy Eucharist. But I prefer to refer to it as a love feast. Wherever there is love, ladies and gentlemen, there will be life. Love gave God to the world. Isn't that powerful? Love brought redemption to the world. Love reconciled us back to God. Love has given us peace and right standing with God. Because of love, we no longer have to worry about eternal damnation. Because of our inability to live up to the standards of the Mosaic law. Because all of our righteousness is as. But thank God that instead of the law, love gave us grace. Jesus says all the law is fulfilled in one word. What's that word? Come on, y'all talk, man. She told us money. <laughs> All the law is fulfilled in one word. What's that word? So he says, stop trying to live up to the Ten Commandments. Grow in love. And if you grow in love, you will naturally fulfill them. He says, I give you a new commandment. Love the Lord your God. With all your heart, your mind, and your might. Then do what? Love your neighbor as you love, as much as you love. What you wouldn't do to you, you shouldn't do to nobody else. That's a Christian for you. I was just getting ready to cuss you, but since I don't cuss myself, I ain't going to cuss you. Getting ready to chop you, but I don't chop myself, so I ain't gonna chop you. Now, now your luck buck if they suicidal. Because <laughs> if they'll kill themselves, they'll kill you. Love took upon itself our sins and gave us his righteousness. For God is love. So we are no longer saved by our works, by how good we are. All y'all goody two shoe people can be disappointed. Cause you judging other people because they're as good as you. Girl, you ain't all of that. You know how high the standards of God's holiness is? You can't match up to that. You need God's grace. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone. And love's work on Calvary. You didn't get saved by your righteousness, nor can you be unsaved by your unrighteousness. You are saved by your faith alone. Once you believe and receive Jesus, you are saved and you are assured of eternal life beyond the grave and abundant life before the grave. Isn't that powerful? Somebody say eternal life after the grave and abundant life before the grave. This sounds like a win-win situation to me. Before the grave on the head, you live abundantly. After the grave, you live eternally. Why you ain't saved? And you think you so smart. Only a dumb person wouldn't be saved. I, I apologize to all the people who ain't saved, but stop being dumb. Let's get with Jesus. So communion is simply a celebration of our salvation. How many of you glad to be saved? Man, you only acting like it, man. Come on. How many of you? Life now is sweet. And my joy is complete for I'm Say it one more time. Life now is sweet. Life now is sweet. And my joy is complete for I'm saved. 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 I'm sure these sopranos are saved because I can't hear them. Let me hear the soprano say. Life. No, that I ain't safe. Life now, life is, now is sweet. Now you get to say it before life now is sweet. my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. 
That's running out though. All of it. Damn. Because y'all ain't even not say it. Don't do all that. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord. One songwriter says, redeeming love has been my thing. shall be till I die. The angels cannot sing our song. They'll stand with folded wings and wonder at the praise prolonged. But one of these days we will crown him King of Kings. If Clay was saved, I'm going to try to lift that, but John half said he might have been able to do it. What are this? But I would I play I would I talk about though? No, no, I, I said, oh see, ah he ain't no. It's coming toward now is what I said. The angels cannot sing our song. Yeah, see I, I Anyone be rowdy with it, wrong and strong? How Laura's deal with you? The angels cannot sing a song. They'll stand with and wonder. Let me see if y'all know it. Come on. My best on singers to sing that. Time will be our loved ones we shall see. For up above the tribulation. Come on from the top, it's coming, Troy. Your head, she sings what redemption draw it night. All the faith united coming out of Minister Brown now. And waited. This trauma ain't no Baptist though. sending you to Mount Pleasant Green for one month because you don't lose all your Baptist foundation and training. Where y'all get that Pentecostal? Day? I want Baptist. I want prophecy. That's Baptist. All right, thank you. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we receive life. Not just any kind of life, eternal life. Life beyond the grave. Abundant life before the grave. Would y'all help me thank God for all of our baptismal candidates? <laughs> Let me tell you, if you had any doubt but some of them, I promise you they are saved because I tried to drown them and they wouldn't die. <laughs> they are saved for real. <laughs> saved for real. 
Could we bless God for his blood and for his body, for life in Christ? Search me. See if there be. be some wicked way in me. Lord, wash us again. Purge us in your blood. Creating us a clean heart. Renewing each of us a right spirit. And for this we say thanks. In your son's name we pray. All of God's people say amen and amen. Thank God it reached. Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And after he had broken it, he said unto them, Eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let's eat together. After the same manner also, he took the cup. 
And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. May the life that was in Christ be also in each of us. Let's drink together. The Lord has taught us to say, Let's take a moment then and spread the peace of God right in your immediate vicinity. Just hug and bless and speak the peace of God on your brothers and sisters. I heard an old, I heard an old, old story. How the Savior came, came from glory. How he gave his life, how he gave his life on Calvary. To save a rest, to save a rest. Baptism as a holy ordinance of the ancient Christian church that serves as a public declaration of one's eternal faith in the life, the ministry, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Further, it serves as a sign, an outward sign, that reflects an inner working of God's grace that is brought by the Holy Spirit. So therefore, on this day, to you, Pastor Munker, and to you, my Revolution family, I wish to introduce to you the newest members of the Household of Faith. And these are baptismal candidates. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate the goodness of God. At this particular time, as you would hear your name call, I'm asking you to just come to receive your certificate, and uh, we're going to take a quick photo with, with our pastor. Amen. 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 First, we call Frank Sweeting. I'm 
Amanda Smith. Annalise Pierre Simon. Ethan Mackey. Estelle A. Gibson. Claudia Seymour. Kristen Clunis. Kristen Clunis. Kristen D. Stubbs. All the way from Miami, Florida. Chelsea Johnson. Chelsea, Chelsea Johnson. Got baptized in the sea, Chelsea. Charles Carey. Brian McKenzie. Brad Henry. Bria Green. April Hanna. Antoinette Hepburn McKenzie. This, this is one of Bishop Hepburn's sweet girls. Samuel Davis. Wendy Lightborn. Tiana McPhee. Siobhan Atkinson. Sandy Bethel. Rasheen Bethel. Raven Smith. Ramon Davis. Rajan R. Brennan. Paris Sanders Simon. Nadia Bain. Melinda Brown. Lashanda Bow. Six years old. All right. Charge your whole on that pastor, child. Oh, the dark man. She ain't shocking. Lauren Woodside. Kaylisa Knowles. India Burroughs. A whole country. This one a proud boat, bad, bad, bad pastor. My sister, Jasmine Jones. And Theodore Seely. Amen. 
I know it's a long service, but it's Easter Sunday. Tell your neighbors that you chill out. <laughs> Amen. Today we want to keep in our prayers Mother Jackie Hall, who is presently in hospital, and we believe in God to touch her body and raise her up and grant her strength. Um, we are remembering in our prayers Sister Laquelle Albrey, who lost her brother on this past Friday. She left the park and went right uh, to that news, and he will be... Oh, uh, funeral service for Mr. Ralph Buckingham, father of Sister... J huh? Who? That. Sister, father of Sister Joanne Williams will be held uh, on Friday, April 5th at St. Agnes Church at 11 a.m. That's this Friday. Funeral service, home-going service for Bishop Salathiel Roll, father of Sister Lynn Roll, will be held on Saturday, April 6th at 10 a.m. at the Church of God Auditorium. Uh, funeral service for Raquelda Woods, doctor, daughter of Sister Elizabeth Ferguson, will be held Saturday, April 6th at 11 a.m. at Living Waters Kingdom Ministries. And I'm asking you to please keep Joanne and Lynn and Elizabeth all in our prayers uh, during this time. Elizabeth lost her daughter, uh, I think it was two Thursdays ago, and um, it's a difficult process to have to walk through. And uh, we believe in God to give all of them strength and grace during this season. Amen? Uh, we want to celebrate with, where's Miss Tan Tanisha Fowler? Where's you? Where's she? On this past week, she was sworn in as the newest justice of the peace in the Bahamas. And we want to celebrate with her on today. God bless you, my dear. God bless you. What a time we had on this past Friday. Now listen to me. If you didn't make it, you miss it. And if you feel bad, I'm glad. I uh, listen to me. I was so filled up all day Friday. They they was they had trouble trying to get me to eat because I was just having such a fantabulous time. I was eating off. I was living off love. And it was just such an amazing experience. Let's thank God for Pastor Shaquille Hanna, who preached on, on Friday. And I want to officially announce to the church that I have begun a petition to put Felicia Archer out the church. And so I need some more of y'all to help me uh, sign on to that petition. I can't keep her around here because she's, she's getting too bad. But what y'all say but the fire starter? O-M-G. O-M-G-G. Mother, you, if, you did not, if you didn't watch it, you need to go back and watch it. That girl preached up a storm on Goodman's Bay Park. Wow. But aren't we grateful for the gifts that God has given us? That's a blessing to have so many wonderful gifts in our midst. I want Sister Jennifer Brennan to stand. Where's, where's Jeff Pinder? Jeff, come over so they can see you. Man, I want, I see Jeff. Oh, man, I want Jeffy Short. I can stand by that. <laughs> Would y'all help me thank God for these two individuals? It was their brain, their work, their effort, their energy that went into making Friday such an overwhelming success. Would you help me thank God for both of them? I appreciate you. Let me tell you something. If you've been around church for any length of time, you know what it is to have good, committed help. Let me tell you what kind of help they have been. Most of what happened on Friday, I don't know nothing about. I was, I was experiencing it and enjoying it the same time y'all were. And Jennifer tell me, Pastor, don't worry. And when I started to ask some questions, you know, a brain shift two centimeters, so... So when I see how she start to react, I pull back. I say, you're done, you're done my family, so I know how blood go, and then your brain shift two centimeters. So I, I can leave that alone. 
But let me tell you something. God is good to us in the gifts that he has given to us. To all of the team members who have helped to coordinate that and make it happen, we are so grateful to all of you, Rayette and her team, Rayette and, uh, and everybody who did the game competitions. Thank God for all of you for your contribution as well. God's blessings on you. Let's get to the word of God then. We're in the book of Luke 23 and 34. You'll notice very well. You probably don't like to read it. <laughs> Some of y'all too deep to admit there are parts of the Bible you don't really like. Got it? Read it with me. Then said, mm hmm. Father. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Acts 2 and 34 and 35 says these words For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. I want to speak to you today from the subject, let it go. Then have a seat. Let it go and have a seat. John 10 and 10 says, the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have it how? The New Living Translation puts it like this, the thief's purpose is so good to have my pastor and elder from Voice Deliverance here today. God's blessings on you all. Amen. The thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and destroy, but Jesus says my purpose is is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Ain't that some? Jesus said, I came to give people a rich and satisfying life. Let me get prophetic. I declare you will have a rich and satisfying life. You done catch enough hell? You done been through enough? And look at your neighbor and say, besides, Jesus paid for it. I might as well have it. <laughs> Ain't no sense he go through all of that in vain for nothing. I mean, if he can pay that price and go through all of that cheaper, I capitalize. As a believer then, you are being recreated in Christ. And you are anointed. You are being anointed and empowered by God to live a rich and satisfying life. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, wherever there is riches and abundance, there will be thieves. And if you are going to experience and enjoy the rich and satisfying life God has ordained for you, it is important that you secure yourself against thieves and ensure there are no open doors anywhere in your life. Because here's what Jesus says, the thief coming. So you're rich, you got a satisfying life, you're blessed, you got things going for you, but there's a thief on the loose looking to thief your things. And you better make sure your house is shut up and secured because if you leave a door open, the thief is going to have easy access to your valuables. Have you ever wondered or asked yourself, what could possibly be hindering or destroying my rich and satisfying life? If Jesus came for me to have it, 
Why am I not enjoying it? The Bible says the thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and a satisfying life. Since that's what Jesus says he came to give me, why am I not enjoying it? The answer is the thief. The question is, if it's the thief stealing from me, my question is, how is the thief getting in? The answer is, you may have a door open somewhere in your life, and usually it's the back door. This year, God has positioned the Revolution Church under an open heaven. When the heavens opened for Elijah, it came with an abundance of rain. So abundance is always connected to open heavens. Therefore, I want to declare this morning that this is the year for abundance in your life. The year you live a rich and satisfying life. When the rain began for Elijah, it did not stop. Therefore, I want to also declare for those who have the faith to receive it, that this is not only the year of abundance, but this is also the year of permanent abundance in your life. I need a witness somewhere in here. Give me a little more on these monitors, please. Somebody says, abundance say permanence that when God releases abundance in my life ain't no thief coming to take what God has done in my life he that has begun it will come pleaded abundance is coming this year and when it comes it will keep coming and God says to tell his people you cannot remain connected to me in this season and think scarcity he says to challenge his people to think beyond limits think beyond restrictions go beyond where your parents have gone go beyond where your friends have gone go beyond what the system told you you can do defy the system because your God is bigger than any system Stop telling yourself what you can do and what you can't do or about what you can have and what you could have. There is more than enough on the planet for all of us to live in overflow. God never planned scarcity for you. He said, I came to give you abundance. So scarcity thinking is outside of God's will for your life. Are you all hearing me? Stop acting like you are going to run out of money. Manage it, but don't be afraid to invest it because God says to tell you, I have an abundance laid up for you. Hit your neighbor say, think abundance. You have things God needs you to get done. And it's time for you to live out loud and to live out of the box. Jesus didn't get up out of the grave for us to live in a box. He broke the box, shattered the glass ceiling, and defied the odds so that we can conquer and influence the world. The, Bahim the Bahamas can't continue. It may be your headquarters, but you are bigger than this rock. I need a prophetic people to hear me now. He says to tell somebody, expand your business. I still need a little more up here. Expand your business. Expand your product. Expand your ideas beyond these borders because there are no boundaries to what God wants to do in and for your life. After Jesus got up, he said, go into all the world and advertise my goodness. Let people see how good I am to you. Look at your neighbor, tell them, show it off, show it off. 
show it off. Don't live in no box. I ain't telling you to be vain, but he said, let your light shine so that men may see your good works and glorify your father. The grave could not hold Jesus and no matter what limits people try to put on you, they cannot contain you. And this resurrection Sunday, it's time for you to rise up, to break out, and to go forward. It's time to reconnect with your childhood dreams and begin to believe God to live the life you've always saw yourself living. Because most of your childhood dreams, like Joseph, came from God. But you have allowed family and friends and circumstances to change your mind about who you are and what you can do. But I speak life to dead dreams this morning. And I speak life to dead visions this morning. And I speak life to dead purpose and dead ambitions today. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus, then out the grave. It's time for you to come out. It's time for you to rise up. He didn't get up and now he's waiting on you to come up. Would you push your neighbor? neighbor and say neighbor Jesus is waiting on you to rise up now you keep shouting about his resurrection but heaven is waiting on you to rise up and to get up and to come forth and there's a dream and there's a vision and there's a destiny on the inside of you that life keeps trying to talk you out of but I came anointed of God to talk you back into what life is trying to talk you out of I don't care what you're dealing with that dream got to live that vision got to live what God told you must come to pass I need a holler and a scream somewhere look at your neighbor say Jesus came forth and something in me is about to rise up something in me is about to break forth I, I, uh. I, come re I came with resurrection power and I declare it will hit your belly and I command that dead baby in your womb to come back to life. Somebody shout it's coming alive. I need faith to fill the room now. If you all tired, go home. I need faith in the room. Look at your neighbor and say it's coming alive. It's coming alive. That's why the devil's fighting you because there's something in you that he don't want to come alive. He's trying to kill the container, but he really want the content. He's trying to kill the package, but he really want what's on the inside. No one said nothing, but the devil is a liar. You gonna live, and what God put in you is gonna. Oh, I wish I could preach to somebody. Everybody planning your obituary and planning for your funeral and planning for your demise. Get ready to disappoint them because you are getting ready. Somebody shout, live, 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 live. I hear the word of the Lord. As a child of God, you can have whatever you want y'all ain't hearing me I preach it to the right group let me say it one more time as a child of God you can have whatever you want or desire you don't let people talk you out of your dreams and talk you out of what you felt passionately about in your heart. But I came to tell you, if you're connected to Jesus, the Andre you can have. First Corinthians 3 and 21 says, Let no man glory in men, for all things are yours say so don't, don't glory in men glory in God because all things are yours you could have when you walk out of here you're going over with your chest stick out and your shoulders square back and you get ready to do something that you walked in here thinking was too big for you. In other words, Paul was saying to the church at Corinth, stop acting like people are better than you are. 
and what they have or have achieved or accomplished is beyond your reach. He says, stop glorying in men because all things are yours. Jesus takes it further and he says all things are possible but only to those who believe death. Believe what? Death. Those who continue to believe. Whatever you do, don't let anyone shake your faith. Whatever you do, don't let any circumstance shake your faith. Faith, because all things are not possible to people who shout and who sing and who dance and who come to church because a lot of people come in the church and don't believe. A lot of them clapping and singing and shouting and dancing and don't believe. That's why when something hit their body, they run to the doctor or take pills and they wouldn't say, Lord, touch my body. They wouldn't pray. They're waiting on pastor to lay hand on them because they don't know they have power in their own hands because they hear it, but they don't really believe it. But he says, whatever you want to become possible, just believe it and if you believe it it becomes possible for you but he says in order for it to manifest you can't believe it then doubt it believe it then quit on it you have to keep believing until you see it Lord help me preach this one no more scarcity thinking and no more impossibility thinking you are a child of God and the Bible says whatsoever you desire, when you pray, you can have it. This is the season to cultivate an abundance mentality because that's what Jesus said he came for you to have. What's the sense of celebrating Good Friday and Easter and what he came for, you don't live. You're religious. Because you're going through all this stuff. God, it's Good Friday. You got on all your Easter clothes today. And there's Jesus say, they dressing up and doing all of this and having good church. And, I, and the purpose for me coming was for them to live abundantly. And they still living in boxes and still living with limitations. And they're still living with scarcity. And I came for them to have abundance. I'm breaking the spirit of religion. Next year, this time, when you come to celebrate Easter, you're going to be celebrating it in abundance. Because you're going to be living what Jesus died for and got up for. He ain't just come for you to be safe. It's like come for you to live abundantly. And he said, all these people all over the world celebrating Easter. And I came for them to have life. And life, Gio, abundantly. But they're living in scarcity. And they have accepted it. You should be living at another level. Now die your word, tune me up. You should be living at another level. Hit the person inside you and tell them you should be living at another do not settle for the level you are living on God said abundance and if you ain't seen abundance tell the devil he's a liar because I can live what God said sickness ain't gonna destroy it demons ain't gonna destroy it riches ain't gonna destroy it life ain't gonna destroy it because God's word is more powerful than any sickness than any rich and any situation and any and I'm going to prove that God is who he says he is and he can do whatever he can be some more in this house because I got to preach somebody give God the praise in this place you should be living at another level doing more such and say you should be doing more you should be accomplishing more you should be achieving more. You should be expanding more. You should be rising higher. You should be producing greater. But your thinking and your mentality is undermining what you have the potential and the capacity to do. Get away from people who limit you. 
who tell you you can't do it or it can't be done. You want to work on my nerves? Tell me I can't do something. If you want to work on my nerves, tell me what can't be done. Before you tell me how it can happen, you've given me all these reasons why it can't happen. I got to put space between you and I because I live by faith. And if you make me believe that, you will reduce my life to what I believe. Because I can't live beyond what I believe. So if I believe it can't be done, it won't be possible for me. Get away from people who limit you. Because it couldn't be done. Watch this. That thing couldn't be done until you decided you can do it. Up until, Cassie, I decide I can do it, it couldn't be done. But now that I've made a decision that this can be done, that thing just became possible. Because I may be the first one to show the world this record could be broken. This door could be open. This still man, this glass ceiling can be shut. You waiting on somebody else to do it when God said, you are the one I called to do it. You keep praying for the anointing and God said, why well, anoint you? And you wouldn't do nothing with the power I give you. Because you keep waiting on somebody else when you are who the world is waiting on. Shake your neighbor, tell them we waiting on you. Wake up. Get yourself together. Dump that bozo you dating and get ready to marry. Who can't take you nowhere and can't take you to the next dimension. Who don't even want to come to church so he can get a word in his spirit. So he can go to where God has ordained him to be. Y'all ain't gonna like it, but I gonna preach it. Because God said, I didn't put you in this world to lose. I put you here to win and to walk in victory. And I ain't gonna be up in here trying to pacify your defeat. I came to empower you to win. So I need winners to make a sound in here. Like you already beat a devil. You already beat cancer. You already beat hypertension. I need a winner. That generational curse gonna be broken. It took your mother out, but it won't take you out. It took your father out. I feel Zion calling me to a higher place. It took your family out, but that hereditary curse, I command that thing to be broken in the mighty name of your mother's limit won't be your limit. Your father's limit won't be your limit. Your grandparents' limit will not be your limit. Somebody should I got more in me. Oh, you thought you came to get Jesus or the gravy. He out. He trying to get you out of yours. Somebody said, couldn't be done until I decided to do it. Now that I've decided to do it, it's possible. Thank you, Elder Minus. I know it's possible because God put it in you. He wouldn't have put the desire, the thought, the dream, the vision, the passion in you if it was impossible for you. The fact that he put it in you is an indication to you that it is possible if for nobody else, it's possible for you. And all the people who are telling you it's impossible, to them it is. So they ain't lying. But that, what is true for them, ain't true for you. You could, man, shake somebody tell them, you could do this. Look back at them and tell them, okay, I will do it then. 
I can do it and I wait until 2024 over. I can start this thing now. I can start working on this now. I can start making plans now. I can start praying now. I can start making connections and making relationships because some of y'all too anti-social. You staying around losers but want to be a winner. When you want to be a winner, you got to find winners. When you want to be an eagle, you got to find eagles. When you want to go somewhere, you got to find people who are moving. You know, it's, you know it's always interesting to me? People who want to win, but hate winners. You want a good marriage, but you envy in somebody with a good marriage. You want a good relationship, but you mad at your cousin who have a good relationship. No, if you want it, you got to get around it, encourage it, celebrate it, learn from it, and you will position yourself to have it. But if you hate it, you will repel it. So I'm mad at nobody who got money. You looking for friends? <laughs> Any applications open? Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee and then sign me up to be your buddy. Do you see the deception? The devil will have you bitter toward the very thing you desire for your life. Got you being petty. They go in this way, you go in the next way. I don't be around. They think there's too much. Because you don't think you are much. If you thought you were something, you would also, uh, you would appreciate people who think something of themselves. Now, I'm not telling you to be, to think more highly of yourself, but if you have an issue with people who carry themselves well, they don't have a problem. You got a problem. Because how people think about themselves will influence how they think about you. That's why you have to be delivered from people. And their opinions. All right, my time running out. I got to get out of here. God said to tell the people today, he has already made provision for you. And if you trust him, he will make a way for that dream in you to come to pass. Don't think small. Don't think singularly. Think big. Think in plurals. But you have to think. You have to pray. Then you have to think. God will guide you into success. Did y'all hear me? God will guide you into success. That's what Solomon meant when he said, acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct. Your, you think he can lead you to defeat? You think he can lead you into pain and misery? He may lead you through the valley, but he don't leave you to stay in the valley. He leads you through the valley to get to the mountain. But you wouldn't follow him. You wouldn't talk to him. You wouldn't acknowledge him. You think you're smarter than God. So you think, I don't have to go to church. I don't have to pray. I don't need a relationship with God. And you keep falling in the pits of life. But he said, if you acknowledge me, I'll direct because I could see a trap miles away. I could see a snake dress up like a friend miles away. I, I, I could see a dog would, would, would look like he's smiling at you, but he's really growling at you and about to pounce on you to try to destroy you miles. And if you let me guide you, I'll guide you right into your destiny and right into your purpose. I want to say to everyone over 60, God is not done with you yet.
That's the best y'all can do. I need Stella to give God some praise in here. I declare Caleb's anointing over you. You shall make it to your promised land and you shall possess your mountain. I declare an Abrahamic and Sarah anointing over your life that even in all age you will still be dreaming and producing. Watch this. This is the Psalm 92. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Watch this. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Here's it. They shall still bring forth fruit in all age. Where are my 60 year olds, man? He said they shall still bring forth fruit. And oh, look at your neighbors. I know you're up there, but God ain't done with you yet. In your old age, God, so you can bring forth fruit. Watch this. He said they're going to be fat and flourishing. Look at someone telling me, look like you're putting on weight. You look like you're putting on weight. Tell them that ain't natural weight, that's spiritual weight, baby. God is adding to my life. He's adding favor, adding blessings, adding goodness. You ain't second nothing. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall. I declare over young people under the sound of my voice that you shall live and not die. Watch this. I declare over everyone under 60, you will live to see all age. Now, if you don't praise God on that, that on you. But when you don't reach a generation, you're thinking about your life. I need a couple of you all under 60 to break out of that crazy place and give me a shot at the most. Oh, blesses me. Here's three people tell them live, live, live. Live, live, live. Live, live, live. Live, live, live. Tell them the devil is a liar. I command you to live. Oh, Baba Shaka. Chance are coming for young people. Chance are coming for 20 year olds. And the devil said you ain't gonna live to see gray head. But I will press it in the name of Jesus. I cancel the death sentence. And I cancel your funeral. You shall. Get my name off the program. I call my name in the atmosphere of heaven. Angels and prophetic intercessors pick me up in the heavens and speak life. I need a roar in this chat. a devil today. I come to bind up a devil today. I come to rout some demons today. Ain't no sickness gonna prevail in here. No diamond of illness gonna prevail in here. The blood of Jesus, the blood
grow gray your skin wrinkled but even in old age because you are planted in the house of the Lord you will be productive and prosperous which means age should not stop your productivity because as long as you are on the planet there is something for you to contribute otherwise you would have already been gone to heaven you have to pray and figure it out. Why does God still have me here? Because your life, your health, your wealth, and your fulfillment is connected to your reason for being on this planet. Find it! Lift your hands. Lord, I pray that you would give every person in the sound of my voice a revelation as to why they are in this earth. As to why they are on this planet. And they will live their life with new meaning, new strength, new vigor, new vitality. And they come on me, baby. And they're going to leave this world better than they met it when they came. If you receive that, give God the praise for it. Take your seats a few more minutes. I'm almost out of time. Our prayer this year then is First Chronicles 4 and 10. The Bible says, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. And do what? And do what? And do what? Enlarge my territory. And that thine hand might be with me. That thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And here's what the Bible says. God granted him his request. Now, I ain't going to finish this, but let me give you this part. It'll be, it'll be me and you, yeah. <laughs> and you too? Oh, that's enough for me then. Two or three witnesses, God is <laughs> Abundance is defined as a very large quantity of something. Plenteousness of the good things of life or prosperity. This is a year of large quantities. Amen. What's coming is coming in large quantities. Amen. I never expected to restart a church with this large quantity. And if it's on the house. Halababashatataba. You don't even know why God sent you to this church. He sent you here because there's something on this church. He wants to come on your life. This is a year of plentifulness. It's a year of good things. Somebody say good things. You want enough bad news for one lifetime? God said it's a year of good things. It's a year of prosperity. Now here's where I end. John 10 and 10 says the thief comes. As a believer, you must understand and be aware of the fact that there's a thief assigned to your life. Just how you have an angel assigned to you, you have a demon assigned to you. When you read Revelation 12, you will discover that all of us had a demon assigned to us from the moment of our birth. Are you all hearing me? And whenever you get ready to tap into your abundance and your purpose, especially in God, here comes the thief. So if this is the year of abundance in your life, the thief is coming. So while you're over here shouting over the abundance, you better make sure you pray it up and alert. 
Because it's like the moving truck coming to your house, bringing your new furnitures, and the thieves in the area watching. Y'all watch Home Alone, right? What a band name? With the ball head. He was scoping the house. They came like they were policemen. Because thieves never come as thieves. Most people who come to take come like they first come to give. And if you don't be careful and have discernment in this season, you will entertain takers as if they are givers. And you keep seeing your life decreasing and wondering why. Because all you have is suckers and parasites that are in your life. You're only hearing me. They'll kill your joy. They'll kill your peace. It's drama every other day. I declare you living abundantly and you don't have time for parasites. If you're coming into my life, bring something. It don't have to be money, but God don't add people to your life to subtract your life. He adds people to your life to add to your life. And if they're improving your life, chances are they are diminishing your life. And I'm telling you, you done gone through too much. And you got too much ahead of you to allow anyone else to come into your life and drag. If this is the year of abundance, the thief is coming. And for many of you, the Holy Spirit said to tell you, he has already arrived. <laughs> Bible talks about wolves in sheep clothing. He there, you just didn't recognize him yet. But God is going to open your eyes and cause you to see. Because here's the bad part. Some of you calling... Good people, thieves. Some of you call in angels demons and demons angels. Because watch this, everybody good for you ain't necessarily good to you all the time. The Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend, which means sometimes your friend will wound you to help you. It's just like a doctor. The doctor sometimes have to cut you to save your life. And if you only have people in your life who, oh my God, who make you comfortable but wouldn't cut you every now and then, chances are that cancer can kill you because you need surgery and sometimes it's painful. And they always telling you what you want here. They looking for something. But people who are looking for nothing, they free to be honest with you and tell you the truth. First Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Understand that thieves only target places, watch this, and people are value to them. If you had no value, they wouldn't be there. They target you not only for what is valuable to them, but more so they target you for what in most cases is valuable to you. Your family, your health, your relationship with God, your destiny, your dreams, your vision, whatever is valuable to you, the thief targets. This is why this year... We have to shut every door that can give thieves easy access to our lives. While thieves will still target buildings with closed doors, they are more likely to successfully target buildings with open doors. Jesus says the thief comes or will come. And in 2024, the thief is coming and his gaze is set on people with open doors. To ensure that even though they experience abundance, it is only temporary and not permanent. He wants you to spend most of this year in some form of lack, warfare, frustration, defeat, worry, turmoil, or distracted. But somebody shout, the devil is a liar. 
He knows he can't stop you from bringing forth fruit this year, but he wants to ensure that what you bring forth does not last. Jesus says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you may have life abundantly. Jesus came to give us a rich and satisfying life. But the thief, on the other hand, comes to steal, kill, and destroy what Jesus came to give. So that there is no permanence to your success. And no permanence to your joy. And no permanence to your progress. And no permanence to your abundance. But this year, we are shutting the door and prohibiting all demonic access. Okay. The door the enemy wants to access this year is the back door. Say the back door. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. That's the front door. Then he says, love your neighbor. As you love your, that's the back door. We are, loving God is the front door, but loving your neighbor is the back door, which is the door the thief has his eyes set on. Because most believers do not struggle with loving God. That door shut. Their struggle is loving their neighbor. And the enemy knows if he can gain access through the back door, through wrong connections, messing up your heart, and killing your love life, and making you bitter, he can eventually mess up the front door and cut short your victory and abundance. The church getting quiet now. That's all right. <laughs> Our neighbors, according to the story of the Good Samaritan, are not people we like. Our neighbors are sometimes people we don't like. Love them. This was a Jew who was wounded. And it was a Samaritan who helped him. And the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. People you don't want nothing to do with is who going to help you when you're wounded. Watch this. If, if, the, if, the, if the Jew didn't accept the Samaritan who he had no dealing with, he would have stayed wounded and eventually died. You know why some people hold their hurting wounds for so long? Because who they need, they wouldn't open up to. Because you don't want no dealings with certain people, but sometimes when one person hurts you, God will send somebody else to heal you, but you don't make up your mind, I ain't dealing with them, and so you can't get your healing so you can move forward in your life because you have already made up in your mind, I have nothing to do with no Samaritan. And let me tell you what's happening with a lot of you. You still mad at people your mommy tell you things about. <laughs> And your mother was wrong. You don't have to say amen to me, but I, I preach in the word of God. She was wrong. You carrying generational issues and generational drama. And that person is anointed to help you get to your divine destiny. But you didn't let one demon come in your air and whisper something in your air. And now your whole perception of who that individual is has been contaminated. And now you can't open your heart to them and open your spirit to them. And the job you're praying for, they could give you. And the door you want to open, they could give you. You don't even know what they got, who they can. Connected with God, put your favor in somebody's hand who you do not like. You know why? He will humble you, He will break you, He will purge you, He will sanctify you, He will get you humble. I pray you get rid of your arrogance because your arrogance is to hinder you from your abundance. Look at somebody, tell them, don't let arrogance keep you from your abundance. One more time, tell them, don't let arrogance keep you from your abundance. Sometimes you gotta humble yourself. Sometimes you gotta say, honey, I need your help. It ain't gonna take nothing from you to send them a text and say, I know we ain't talking a while. Lose your pride. Swallow your pride. Tell them, I know we ain't talking a long time and things ain't things, but I just need to... 
because you can't dictate who God used to bless you because he's God and not you. Man, y'all ain't like this kind of preaching. I gotta preach. Come here, Elijah. You don't want dipping this Jordan, this dirty. Come your name or name or name or name. You don't want dipping the dirty Jordan River. But God said to tell you the same river you're calling dirty is the same river where your blessing is, where your miracle is, where your favor is, where your next level is. You're calling your blessing dirty. I like this church. You're too loud. Yeah, because you need deliverance. You stay right now. <laughs> he just preached too hard. Yeah, you stay right in here. <laughs> Lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. God wants to do something amazing in your life. He wants to bring abundance in your life. But you got to close some back doors. Because it seemed like every time God pour into you, it leak right back out. You know why? Because you got too much leaks in your heart. You got too much holes in your heart. You got too much things you're dealing with that you wouldn't let God mend. And you wouldn't let God heal. And you wouldn't let God fix. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I learned long time. People who complain about church hurt are the most unforgiving people in the world. Because if you forgive the church, you wouldn't be so angry at the church. But any hurt you hold on to, it keeps you angry and bitter. Look at your number and say, let it go. Let it go. Let, it go. Let, it go. Let, me, let me ask something. Who in your, who in your, in your church? Right? And some of the things I see people calling church, they ain't really had no church. Right? You talking about the usher? And treat you right. That ain't no real. Girl, if you really experience some of these people in church, that's small things. And the reason you still angry and can't worship and can't come to church, I ain't going no more, no more church. That ain't you talking. That's bitterness talking. If you forgive, you will go back and then say, I will bless the Lord. I know I was glad when they said unto me, come now. That's why your prayers can't be answered. Because the Bible said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear my prayer. And you can't get a prayer answered because your heart clogged up. You mad. Pastor pray for that one and they get their healing. He prayed for me and ain't nothing happened. Pastor must ain't pray hard enough for me. You want to kill me. You know why? Because you want somebody else to assume responsibility for something that is really your fault. It's a dereliction of your own personal duty to unclog your heart so that God could send something down your pipeline. You might as well say amen. You looking at church, hey? You looking at church, hey? But I ain't got time to hold on to no hurt. My destiny too big. Let me tell you something. The light is brighter than the darkness for me. I don't care what they trying to do. I see something. The Bible says, <laughs> put your eyes on the author. I'm the finisher of your faith. Who for the joy that was set ahead of him, he despised the shame. Look at your eyes. I see something ahead. I know what you're going through. I know what you're dealing with. But what I'm dealing with right here can't compare to what I see coming in my direction. So I'm letting this thing go before it holds me down and keeps me back. All right, I'm done. I'm out of time. Your neighbor, who Jesus was talking about, love your neighbor. It was a Samaritan who, who, who they didn't want nothing to do with. So it's people who hurt you. That's your neighbor. Who wronged you? Who disappointed you? Who let you down? Who left you wounded? Our neighbors then are people we like and those we don't like. 
If that wound is going to heal, the medication for it is not to hurt who hurt you. The medication for it is to forgive them and move. Let it go. Because when you do, watch this. Here's what the Holy Spirit said. When you do it, you reclaim your heart. Because most of you are in control of your heart. Other people controlling your heart. And God said, when you forgive them and let it go, you reclaim ownership of your heart. Look at your neighbor and say, take your heart. You mean they get determined if you smile, if you come to church, child, I get in that church because of this one and that one. You mean these people dictating when you can come into the house of the Lord? Look at your neighbor and say, that's idolatry. That's idolatry. You putting people higher than God. You making people bigger than your things. Now God tell you to move out there and you got to go. But I'm just saying, don't let it be because... You ain't leaving that marriage because irreconcilable differences. You leaving them because you don't want to be forgiven. And you're supposed to be the Christian one. God tell me my season up. God don't talk to you. You can't hear him. Your heart too mess up. Only thing God got to tell you is forgive. You hearing everything else, but you ain't hearing that. My, you all say, man, we all must shout us. My God, I can't buy a shout. When you forgive, you reclaim your heart and break the power of control and bondage that would, that wound had over your life. The Bible doesn't tell, not only tell us who our neighbors are and the fact that we should love them, it also tells us how we should love them. Jesus says we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves, which means we do to them what we do to ourselves. What we won't do to ourselves, we won't do to them. All right, let me end here. I ain't got, I ain't got the time. I got the time because fusion will put us out. So, look at your neighbor one more time for me and tell him, let him go. Now, here's what the Holy Spirit told me. Here's what the Holy Spirit told me. Here's what the Holy Spirit told me. Jesus on, Jesus on the cross, Jesus says, Father, forgive them. What he said? He said, what he said, Father, who did he tell forgive them? 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 Which means Jesus had already forgiven them. Who was all in the grudge? I know that sounds sacrilegious, but I get it with the book. I know, I know you want to tell me, Pastor Cox, I got this boy teaching all kinds of heresy. And I know that's what you're doing. But the Bible didn't say, Father, help me forgive them. The Bible says, Jesus prayed and said, Father, you forgive them. Because Jesus had already forgiven them. But anybody you forgive, it don't mean they good with God. Oh, bless his name. And the reason you need to forgive them because if you don't intercede for them, God about to wipe them. Man, I, I wish I was preaching to a different... I wish I was somewhere. I wish I was somewhere. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ain't angry no more. You ain't got no more grudge. But God's still angry. And if you don't start praying for some people who did you wrong, but you ain't hearing me. God is going to wipe them clean out because God said I tell you, vengeance is mine. You ain't saying nothing to me. He said you ain't got to fight in this battle. If you turn it over to me and let me fight the battle, if God be for me, who can be against me? I need somebody to clap your hand and give God the praise because look at your neighbor say, God got this one. I strain it on this month. Look at your neighbor say, God, he's got this one. But he want to see how mature you are. He want to see how grown up you are. He want to see how spiritual you are. Because Jesus could have said, Father, take him out. Father, kill him. Father, destroy him. But Jesus instead said, Father, 
don't don't kill them forgive them don't destroy them forgive them don't break them mend them don't pull them down lift them up and God said to tell you until you start praying for everyone who hurts you you ain't gonna see his glory in your life I need a chair quickly I need a chair quickly that's what the Bible says Jesus said father don't hurt them don't kill them forgive them and because he had the right attitude toward people who hurt him because he had the right attitude toward people who dissed him and toward people who wounded him God said to him he said son I ain't gonna kill him I'm gonna forgive them but here's what I'm gonna do for you I'm gonna make you sit down until I make all of them become your footstool I'll forgive them but I'm gonna still humble them I'm gonna still um, well, yeah, I preach it to the wrong I preach it to the wrong whoever I'm preaching to I need you to give God a crazy praise because God said I tell you while I'm lifting you up Oh, I'm going to be humbling some people who wanted to destroy your life and mess your life up because he said I'll bless them that bless you but I'll curse them that curse you look at somebody tell them, you know what's good for you watch how you put your mouth on an anointed child of God be careful how you handle a man of God somebody sit down put your foot up because God is getting ready to put you in a different position look at your name say my position just change my posture just change my status just change yeah. they thought you were done they thought it was over they hung him high they stretched him wide he hung his hand for me die but that's not how the story ends three days later he rise again I don't know who I'm preaching to but slap somebody tell them get up take a seat Sit down. Stop fussing. Sit down. Stop getting even. Sit down. Because when you sit, it's a position of rest. It's a position of no more toil. Look at your neighbor and say, God, say rest. Stop worrying about it. Sit down. Rest in God. It's a position comfort can you all handle this God is about to put you in a comfortable position in your life you suffered long enough but sit down you've been through long enough now sit Let somebody tell him God is changing my position. He's given me a seat. He sent Michael to escort me to my chair and say, Rakino, sit down. Sit here till I make all of your enemies, your Facebook enemies, your Instagram enemies, your TikTok enemies, your email enemies, your WhatsApp enemies, your foot you are not ready for me but I feel the glory of the resurrected Christ are you ready are you ready
revolution you only gotta fight just sit down God will make our enemies Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. 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 Hit somebody tell them sit back. I gotta go to my seat. But Sharice, a king. The Bible said, and my Lord said to my Lord, my Lord said to my Lord he wasn't speaking to him as a suffering lamb he was now speaking to him as a conquering king he said my Lord said to my Lord sit down on my right hand a power of authority till I make your enemies your footstool cause palm a king is not in his fullest authority when he's walking around in the kingdom a king rises to his highest authority when he sits down on his throne you all ain't saying nothing that's why the bible said come boldly before his throne that he may obtain help in the time of need when god tell you sit down he's telling you step into your kingship step into your authority where's the house step in to your dominion look at your neighbor and say neighbor you are a king you are a lord act like it act like it stop crying stop complaining because where the word of a king is there is power I said there's power there's power in your mouth open your mouth command the devil to get the hands command your body to be healed command your money to line up cuz I Sit down. Because when a king sits on his throne in rest, not toil, he don't want to go to war. He opens his mouth from the throne. That's where judgments are made, decrees are made, orders are given, decisions are made. And whatever he says from his throne, his head, his people, they have to execute it and carry it out. Well, who are my people? Your people are the angels of heaven. They are ministering spirits sent forth to do the bidding of them that are heirs of salvation. And they hearken in strength at the voice of his word. So when you take a seat in God, the Bible said we are seated with Christ in heavenly places above principalities and above powers. I hope you are getting this. When this place, the seated place, is a place of faith. It's a place where you say, Lord, I turn it over to you. I'm going to rest in you. I'm going to trust in you. I got hope in you. But then I hope in the Lord shall never be ashamed. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, if you put your faith in God, he'll make sure you never have to hang your head down. If you put your faith in God, he'll make sure, Mario, they won't be able to embarrass you. Because when they thought they were looking for you in a grave, an angel will come and tell them, he is not here. He is risen. As he said, man, I gotta go. I get sick of y'all. But I need a crazy shot. I got one more shout. 
Look at somebody tell them, neighbor, don't look for me in no graveyard. Don't look for me in failure. Don't look for me in poverty. Don't look for me in sickness. I've been risen. I've risen. I've risen. When you came in here, you might have been in a grave. But when you go home, tell them don't look for me in no tomb. I've risen. My faith has risen. seconds to dance. I just need to dance. I need to dance. One, two, one, two, three, dance. Oh Lord. Yeah Lord. Yeah Lord. Yeah Lord. Yeah Lord. God I feel the I pray everyone leaves this church with a rest in their spirit. Give them a rest. Give them a peace that's a pass it all understand. 
Let it rule in their hearts and in their minds. You said you will keep that which we commit unto you. Against that day. Almighty God, you're able to do exceeding and abundantly. Above all we can ever ask or think, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. Now and forever. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. We are way over our time. They're going to need this Vienna, so we're going to have to depart very quickly. And I pray, would somebody help me rest the blessing on fusion? Lord, bless this business. We can't be and they not prosper. But Lord, cause them to remember who it is who give them the power to get well. So that you may establish your covenant in the earth. Bless your people now. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Oh God. Oh God. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you. May he give you his peace now and forevermore. And the people of God say, God bless you. With my own.